What up, Leron here, and today we're painting Ethan Klein of H3H3. What up, Leron here, thank you for joining me in another video. And today, as I mentioned, we're gonna paint Ethan Klein of H3H3. Uh, let me show you this. I'm sure many of you are unfamiliar with that guy. So basically it's a couple here on YouTube. Uh, they have a very, very funny uh, YouTube channel and I've been following them for a while. They're hilarious. Uh, so I'll definitely put a link in the description box below. Uh, they're pretty big. They, they've got like 5 million followers. And so I just wanted to do this as kind of a, um, a gesture or a tribute to them. Uh, so I really hope you'll, you'll enjoy this process. I used again three paints. Uh, this time I used Thalo Blue, um, New Gamboche and quinacridone rose okay and this time i decided to use my daniel smiths uh, so i think it's going to be really fun uh, if by any chance you are a follower of h3h3 i need your help uh, to make sure they see this so if you can just go comment let them know email them i don't know whatever leave a, a comment on the channel any way possible to let them know that i did a portrait of them that would be fun if you don't know them that's cool check out their channel uh, so without further ado let's change the angle and get started Okay, so I've got the drawing laid down here. Um, I tried to keep it relatively simple. The face here is a little complex, so I decided to um, make sure that I balance it out with simplicity in the body. Um, and because the face is rather small here, this adds another, I think, uh, dimension of challenge. Uh, I find that with um, larger portraits, it really is easier to um, get into the finer details and notice the values better uh, and the smaller the face is the harder it becomes. Uh, so in terms of colors I'm actually using my Daniel Smith palette with this one. Um, I just decided to give it a try after a while I haven't uh, done too much with it. It just felt like uh, I want to fresh refresh uh, freshen things up, <laughs> up I guess. Uh, so I'm basically using three colors here. Um, and this can be said to be my favorite uh, trio at the moment, my favorite primary combo. So we have the new gamboche here, which is the yellow. It's a bit of a warm, almost orangey yellow. Then for the red, I'm using uh, quinacridone rose. And for the blue that you will see later on, I'm using uh, thalo blue. Uh, so this is a classic kind of almost uh, like the cyan yellow magenta only I replaced the um, <clears throat> the cyan with it's well it's phthalo blue and the and the yellow is warmer that's the main uh, difference the classic uh, kind of trio has a cool yellow and I'm not a big fan although I should probably try using it more uh, and see if I like it uh, so anyway I'm starting here with the lightest part which is the the top of the head that was uh, yellow then I'm starting to gradually add some reds um, and when I get to the face, and I'll try to make this in a one kind of even uh, wash without a separation between the, the hat and the face, I'll start using a bit more of the thalo blue that you see right now. By the way, the, the person uh, is Ethan from H3H3. It's a very popular YouTube channel that I love. They do parodies and fun stuff like that. Um, really, really, I recommend you check it out if you like kind of... Uh, funny things like this. Uh, they're just hilarious. They also have a podcast which I really enjoy listening to. <coughs> um, they're a bit crazy. He's a bit crazy. Um, so uh, if you like these kinds of things, you may love this one as well. Um, if you're more, uh, if you don't like crazy stuff, then maybe you won't like it. Anyway, we're gonna zoom in on the face now. Um, I did um, show a post of this on Instagram. So if you're following me there, you probably saw it. Uh, Ethan, the guy in the picture, also saw it. Uh, this is from their video uh, called Four, Four Looks, I think you'll need uh, this summer or something like this. And it's just ridiculous attires, and this is one of them called the Gentleman. So uh, I, I I will probably put a link for that in the description box. Um, in any case, now I'm moving on to the hair, uh, and for this one I'm using a combination of the Thalo blue and uh, the Quinacridone rose. Um, and the hair is significantly darker than the, the hat. Now the thing is, and you'll see later on, I could have probably uh, gotten away with a much, much darker 
um, darker wash later on. I could glaze on top of the hair, but this will actually be almost my final wash. So um, I've gone through a few uh, interesting things in this uh, portrait, in this painting uh, in general. <coughs> Sorry, that was my phone. I'm gonna put it on silence. Um, so in any case, you'll see I try and do things a little differently uh, in some in some nuances or, or rather um, it's like it's very it may appear to be very similar to what I'm doing usually but there are a few things I tried changing here um, so as we go along and if I if I uh, find those things and if I remember them I'll, I'll let you know it will mainly happen in the uh, second wash okay um, the one thing that's really unique is I believe this was done in only two washes uh, for the face I don't remember though for sure so we'll have to wait and see um, in any case, now because the hat is so shiny, you will see me soon balancing things out. So I decided to switch to more of the blue and then the uh, quinacridone rose here with maybe some touches of blue in it. Um, trying to have the face still be the center of attention and you'll see me using a mix of cools and warms. Um, but I'm not trying to have it as shiny as the hat, which, which I just went ahead and did like really shiny. Um, and rather monotonous with mainly the yellow, but still I think it's a good balance, you'll see later on. Um, so with this wash, and I'm trying to, and here you see the challenge of working in small sizes. Um, my main concern is I don't worry about anything, but uh, avoiding the highlights, that's number one. And number two, getting wet and wet wherever possible for for maximizing the impact okay if I can get something wet and wet I'll go ahead and try and do that which is what you saw me doing now with the eyebrows um, and with all the rest of the stuff um, I was actually sick for a few days uh, during the weekend it was a bit annoying and I hate being sick I'm one of those people that when they're sick I see no hope uh, for my life and for the human race, I'm like, oh, it's all, it's, it's doomed. Everything's. I'm like, I become so negative sometimes when I'm sick, and and I have to really work hard to pull myself out of it. Um, and this one was like mild, so so I was okay, but still, uh, I was suffering a lot, and my nose is still a bit um, <clears throat> runny, and my throat is a bit, yeah. So apologies if I make uh, weird noises during this video. Um, so anyway. I hate being sick. I absolutely hate it. Uh, it doesn't help for creativity as well. Uh, so now for the lighter parts, I'm bringing in uh, some yellow. And this is where I think the, the main interest is created. So you see me, and, and I avoided the highlights on the eye and on the cheek. There are a few of those. Um, and I leave some on the nose. I wasn't actually that concerned with blending because everything is so small. It's like, you know, I could have blended a bit more here and there, but just the act of blending and, and smoothening the edges um, makes use of some more wet brush. And it just felt like I'll be giving out too much control for this small uh, a portrait. So I was extra careful with it and I didn't go too crazy there. Now I'm getting to the mustache, which is one of the darker parts of this uh, face. And then we'll get the like the beard and, and the double chin. Uh, very important for this look, the double chin. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So I, I stumbled upon, this is interesting. I really want your, your uh, feedback on it. So I stumbled upon quite a few videos of uh, by Israeli people recently and in all sorts of different areas so we got a few people that, that do like um, art but also I looked at some I don't know just randomly some even self-development stuff and I really noticed how um, how obvious the accent is like the, the Israeli accent and I was wondering how bad it is for my videos. If it really comes through because, or, or it sounds like I'm, it's kind of unclear, like it's clear I'm not American or whatever, but, but you can't tell because the Israeli accent is really, really, really distinct. I can recognize it like instantly uh, if someone has it. And for me, I'm not sure if it is a thing, like if you can 
<clears throat> really understand it easily or not. So I'm just curious to hear your opinion. So anyway, now I'm dropping in some uh, some of the shadows, and I think it's really cool that like the left side is is kind of um, blue red ish. Then on the right it's yellow, but then inside the yellow I do the shadows wet and wet, and using the phthalo blue on the yellow. And you really have to be careful with these kinds of things because. Um, it's so easy to get the yellow and blue to mix too much and create a green, but notice how I was able here to preserve the authenticity of each color. So uh, the the green kind of turns into a teal, I guess, or turquoise. I don't know. Uh, Turquoise. I, I don't know how to pronounce that color, but, but in any case, it's like it's almost kept entirely pure, uh, which is good. This is something I noticed that I lack. In landscapes, I tend to to um, to gray things out a little too much, and with portraits, I'm kind of able to preserve the 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 pureness of each color. So this is something I'm working on in terms of landscapes as well. Uh, by the way, I'm working on two main things actually in terms of uh, landscapes. Uh, one of them that I really want to work on is the the composition. I just suck at it. I have no other way of saying it. I just don't know how to translate what I see in a, in a in a pleasing way too much. You know, too in a, in a pleasing enough of a way. Um, and this is this frustrates me sometimes. So I'm really trying to to learn that and also the the concept of abstraction in general. How to make things more simplified and saying a lot with with less. Um, I'm kind of going through phases where I want to uh, go for a more uh, get a feel by the, the value and work really slowly but then again I also want to uh, abstract things and make them simplified because I find it uh, personally more pleasing to me um, so anyway this is one thing that <coughs> I'm really trying to work on and it's going to be my focus for for the entire of 2018 uh, and I want to talk about 2018 in just a moment so I took my time here mixing uh, quite a dark value using mainly the uh, the red and blue um, because the the yellow will kind of brighten things up a little. Sometimes if you add yellow to this kind of mixture, <coughs> you'll find that it accidentally uh, lightens it too much. <coughs> Sorry about that. There's gonna be a lot more coughing. So. <coughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> this is what my friends and family had to suffer during the weekend, listening to me doing all these ridiculous noises. Um, so anyway, yeah, I, and I, I, I am like, a, like a really dramatic with this. I, I hate it, and then I just go like this. Yeah. <clears throat> so anyway, it just makes it worse. Uh, so now I'm moving on to the clothing items and the clothing here it's really gentleman like this is the whole goal of this and he's a real gentleman Ethan and so I'm going significantly darker because that's what I see in the reference um, it looks it appears to be much darker and and I will later on alleviate the difference uh, between the, the clothing and the face so we need to remember two things right now first off it's gonna dry a little lighter than it appears right now, especially because it's a pretty wet wash. And second, <clears throat> I'm gonna add a second layer to the face, which will make it look a little better and a little more uh, equal or equalized or whatever you wanna call it. Um, so now as I move along the clothes, I'm trying to get them in one wash, okay? I'm not trying to make a separation for the first wash. So my main challenge is preserving the um, the evenness of the wash, meaning not getting too many blossoms and blooms and stuff like that, while also uh, making it interesting. I think this is a big challenge, uh, at least I find, uh, of making these kinds of washes interesting, uh, because what happens is if you just try to work really fast, you get one boring, monotonous wash. And now I zoomed in a bit so you can actually see what I'm doing. Um, I should probably have switched to a larger brush, but the thing is I don't have a larger brush that I really like more than this one. Uh, so that's fine. And now you see I'm really winging it. So I know that's where the the jacket or the tuxedo or whatever that thing is, is coming. <clears throat> so I'm putting in uh, the darker blue there. And then I'm trying to lighten it up in the middle. Um, now the one thing I, I want to, to divert your attention to right now, and you'll see this in a moment, notice his right 
uh, arm that he lifts up. It's on our left side, on the left side of the uh, of the painting. Uh, I th I will get there a really, really good classic watercolor effect. Okay, so I want you to later on pay attention to that. Um, I think, funny enough, it's one of the highlights of this, uh, of this painting, um, as much as the face, because I got the balance there great, the edges, they're super interesting. There's some... Um, uh, some rough edges, some uh, some well blended uh, edges. So it's just really interesting, that, and I got a good sense of light there. Um, so we will hopefully see this later on when I put in that watch. Now you saw me just a second ago dabbing in water into the uh, into the wash, and the reason why I do that is I felt it was too dark, so I just dabbed water in, especially in the middle, not where the jacket is, uh, and now I'm trying to darken back the jacket again. Now remember, when you do this kind of thing, you need to have much thicker paint on your brush uh, than on paper, uh, because otherwise it will just spread everything out uh, if it's too watery or something like this. Um, so there's a lot going on when I'm working on this wash, there's a lot going on into this, a lot of thought, a lot of muscle memory as well of me understanding what um, consistencies of paint to use. There's a lot of um, of subconscious thought going. There. It's subconscious now because I practiced it so much. Uh, and these are kinds of things that if you try to just do without the experience, you will get um, not saying that it's wrong, I mean, you have to acquire experience in some way, but sometimes seeing someone else do it, you don't see the nuances and then you expect a similar result and you don't, so don't feel discouraged if you're dealing with huge washes and you can't get them to be even or something like this. I mess this up all the time, this time I kind of got lucky and everything works in my favor. Uh, but in any case, uh, that being said, I do plan, and I, I mentioned this a few moments ago, um, about 2018, I already started uh, planning out my main goals for this year. Now I'm getting some of the jacket details wet in wet. Um, but anyway, some of my goals for this year, the things, the main things I want to achieve. So I work in a, in a model that my friend uh, taught me which is I'm marking five main goals for 2018 and these have to be big, like they have to excite me. They have to, if these happen, I can say that this year was amazing. And then you have uh, secondary 15 goals um, that if you get them, your life is going to be like much better. Okay, so uh, a friend just sent me a weird text and he's really funny, so I kind of, I try to read it, well, anyway, <laughs> so, um, so I'm planning it out and one of the, the 15 goals that I have, uh, the, the, the sub goals, if you will, um, are getting a, uh, a complete, um, how would I call it, like a complete set of courses on watercolor from beginning to an end. And I need to really self-reflect in that sense and think if I'm ready to do it. Um, I think I am for most of it. Um, and I plan to really have a huge structure to it that, that really allows you to start at the very beginning and then take it on to the more advanced level and maybe even specialize in some specific aspects like um, portraits or landscapes or or even abstract or whatnot. Um, so anyway, I'm I'm trying to figure it out. I think it's going to happen somewhere around uh, 2018. I think is a good time to start working on that. Um, I'll need to to really think this through and make sure that I'm uh, well prepared to do that. Okay. Um, I want to create like the best product on watercolor, basically. So anyway, this is really fascinating. Um, I'm happy that I'm starting to work on the plan uh, that early, um, that early on, which gives me enough time to really meditate on it and write a few iterations of it until I find the right balance. Um, so back to the painting. Now, what we have is one huge even wash. Now, I will connect it to the, to the other arm that I told you this is where the magic is. So I want you to pay attention to what happens here. Um, a rather unusual <laughs> angle for me to work in. Uh, this is something I started doing about three or four months ago, really playing around with the angle uh, of the hand and the brush and the paper. Um, because I think there are some lines you can't get otherwise, you really need to be loose with your hand. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, um, you'll notice how there will be some bleeding into, into the existing wash. 
because some of it has dried off. Uh, I knew that and I took that into consideration. I knew it's going to happen. So there was no real choice about it. Um, I knew that I have to get that main bulk of, of even wash there. Um, so, so yeah, that's kind of a compromise I went through. But anyway, you'll notice how that this hand turns out really magical. You'll notice this in the next few washes as I put in more details on it. So what happens now is that I have, once again, a large wash for the entire body. Um, and the one thing I want to do is create some differentiation in it, okay? But first, we're gonna wait for it to dry. We're gonna, I think we're gonna go back to the face. Um, and, and then once the face dries, I'll go back and create some differentiation between the jacket and the, the uh, area where the shirt is and the sleeves and the pants and everything. Right now, we just have one even wash but that does have some interest in it. And what you see me doing now is lifting some of that. It felt a bit too dark, so I'm lifting some of the paint. Um, but anyway, yeah, now we have just one big uh, wash that we that that is varied. So this was the thing I really put an emphasis on to make it varied. You can see the, the red and the blue and the, some green in it. You can see everything. Um, and it's even. Okay, so that's the main part. So now back to the top part of this painting. Uh, starting to put in the shadows for the hat. And here already you will notice me in just a moment taking edges into consideration. So you'll notice how um, I'm just putting in the shadows basically. Um, and in a moment I'll come back and blend. But I'm not going to blend everything. I'm going to blend some parts of it. And you see, so on the left you have a, a gradual change. But then on the bottom it's sharper and harsher. And this is exactly what I wanted to achieve here. Uh, and I think it really creates interest. And I'm really starting to pay attention to edges. Um, uh, by the way, I talk about this a lot. But the way to blend is, and I'll demo it in just a moment, is you uh, clean the brush. Uh, and you can you could see me I think earlier doing this as well I'm not sure, uh, but anyway what I'm gonna do is uh, clean the brush in the water in the clear water, uh, wipe most of its moisture off and maybe leave it leave it at a uh, two out of ten level of, of wetness I guess if that makes sense and then I'm using the the uh, direction that's against the hair to brush it I find that this really works well for me at times so you see I'm, I'm kind of using the brush harshly um, and I find it really works well for blending so now you get a well blended um, areas on the side but in the middle you have that harsh um, edge of the shadow and this I think really adds a lot of interest to the work um, and then you can come back and add some wet in wet if you want. Uh, so right now I'm I'm not necessarily planning on wet in wet, but there is a strong shadow at the bottom there that I'm trying to get in. Um, so sometimes you have to wait a little longer so that the paint doesn't spread out as much. Uh, but with this example, it was I think it was good a good move. Um, so now for the hair, yeah. So I'm adding, uh, here's where this work, this painting in general, becomes a little different from what I am uh, I usually do. So I'll usually have um, three washes, one for the darks, another one for what I think is the darkest darks, and then a third one when I realize I wasn't going dark enough. So with this one, I don't know if I just went dark enough, maybe it's the phthalo uh, blue that's really dark and strong, um, but I didn't really have a need for a third wash as much, um, especially for the hair. It kind of just worked out on the second wash. Um, so you'll get to see this uh, now. This is where the difference starts. Um, I think with the face, maybe I add a third wash. I really don't remember. We'll have to wait and see. <clears throat> Even though I did this painting maybe uh, two or three days ago, uh, I still don't remember. And many times when I narrate this, these videos, it's like a painting I did... Um, much much earlier than like maybe a week or two before uh, narrating. So, <coughs> for example, next week I think I'll have a video that of a painting I did. Um, if you saw it on Instagram of the guitarist guitar player, uh, it's Vika, his name. Um, and I did this maybe like two weeks ago, and I still haven't narrated it. Oh so, yeah. Uh, now with the details, you have to be really careful and get it right. Um, so and it's so small as well that, that that it has to be very simple. So I'm just putting in the the um, eyebrow and the the eyelid or the iris all in one go really. Um, now for the other areas they need to be a little lighter. So I cleared some of the paint off the brush and I'm using a lighter paint now. And you have to be careful in these cases just not to have the dark 
color uh, or value rather blend too much into the uh, other color you just put. So I'm, I'm kind of being careful here. I'm not touching the existing paint too much of the eyebrow and the eyelid. I'm kind of going around it. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, I will have a third wash for the face. Now I remember, I think that there was one. Um, so again, with this one, my concern is getting the darker areas in while again being careful or very careful with the highlights. Um, the lips, for example, right now are, are a bit too light. So this is an area I'll need to darken up. Uh, they just jump uh, too much, um, especially with the contrast with the mustache and the beard. And also, uh, they I don't want them to steal too much from the highlights on the nose and on the cheek and on the, in the eye. So I kind of have to be careful with that. Um, it's kind of similar if you watched me paint Tio uh, to, if you remember, his tongue was really light and, and the teeth were supposed to be much lighter than it, then I added the, kind of a weak wash to it to balance things out, if you remember. I think it was a really good part of the portrait, so I remember it very clearly. Um, so anyway, now for the other eye, and I'm trying to make things a little darker here, uh, just to create a better contrast, because on the left, everything is dark uh, regardless. Um, so I kind of just got those lines in. Um, it doesn't have to be complex. Once again, it's even better if you can keep it simple in these small sizes. Um, you just have to make sure that you basically make an abstraction that's still loyal to the source. That's that's basically it. You create a simpler version of the 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 reference of the person of the face, uh, but it still has to be kind of loyal to the original. So that's a big challenge. And now I'm, I start to blend things around. I also should probably blend the yeah the forehead area because otherwise it would dry and and I won't have the chance to do so. Uh, so you see how it kind of evens things out a little. And then I just move on with the darker wash. Now it's I barely have any paint on the brush, so I had to re-dip it. Um, and I'm trying to avoid the the lightest yellow area. I don't want to kill that yellow because it's gonna be responsible for a lot of the um, sense of light and shadow here. So I want to make sure I avoid it. Um, and sometimes when you put in paint and then you blend it in, you make it much lighter, even much more than you than you planned. Uh, so you have to kind of be careful with that. Um, what else is interesting here? Yeah, so this is basically it. I'm just going to continue moving in that way uh, all across the face. For the shadow, I'm just using a, a rather weak mix of um, of the blue and, and the red. So the thalo blue and the quinacridone rose. Um, the quinacridone rose is really similar to the schminka magenta. The thalo blue is really similar to the cobalt azure, I believe, but also to the, to 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 Schmincke's, uh thalo blue as well. And the new gamboge is kind of similar to the chromium yellow hue that I love to use so much. Um, so these all have parallels. Uh, I'm not sure about their uh, their uh, mixture or consistent or not consistency. Or their ingredients or the pigments uh, specifically, I don't remember off the top of my head, but they could be similar. Uh, and which causes them to, you know, look similar finally. Um, you know, as much as I talk about paints and pigments and, and stuff like that, I'm not a big fan of delving too deep into this from a from an artist's perspective. Uh, I just like to look at the paint, see what it looks like, and, and learn how to use it in a way that's beneficial for my work. Um, I love new colors, but I'm not a, like... I wouldn't define myself as a color junkie. I wouldn't say that because uh, just because I met other color junkies and now I know what they're like and I'm like, mm, that's not exactly a good description of me necessarily. Um, I love to try out new things, but I don't necessarily see myself as a collector of paints. Um, and it's quite embarrassing. Like the last time I purchased paints was a long time ago because I don't need to, I, I just have a big stock of them. I bought a lot uh, when I just got started and so I didn't really need too much. Um, and so yeah, I'm pretty economical in the way I work as well. Um, so so I 
never really waste too much materials or stuff like that. So I actually had to stop the recording for a moment uh, just to blow my nose. I think it would have been too strong. And now that I'm using a normal mic, I didn't <laughs> want it to come through too much. Um, yep, yeah, my nose is really nice to me. Um, I don't know if you've noticed. Oh, by the way, now I'm just using some more uh, quinacridone rose dominated mixture just to make things a little more interesting. I think it's nice that in the hair there is a bit of that as well. Uh, basically done with the face and now I'm moving on to the clothing. Uh, I will be back to add some darkest darks to the face, but very few. No need to go too crazy there. Uh, but in any case, I don't know if you noticed, but I kind of changed my content strategy here on YouTube, meaning the videos um, that I published for maybe the last two weeks or so um, really revolve around watercolor and it's <clears throat> I'm just listening to you and I'm trying to figure out what you respond to and what you enjoy the most you can see my hair and you will be able to see more of it later on um, so anyway I'm just trying to figure out what's the thing that people enjoy most seeing here and I started looking at the stats and I did some heavy research on what are my most successful videos and what goes into those and makes them be more successful than others. And I got to the conclusion that watercolor is the really the main interest here. So what I'm doing is an experiment. This entire month is going to be very dominated by... Um, watercolor related videos whether it's like all of my greens all of my reds uh, these kinds of videos the paint show um, painting processes things of that nature um, and and I'm really just trying to see what it will do in terms of the growth of the channel and I already noticed in the last week or so that there is some accelerated growth um, because what happens is when you publish a video and it does well, YouTube kind of rewards you and you get a bit more of a push on the next vid. And if you can get this um, nice succession of pushes, uh, you can get a lot of views. Um, but what would happen with my channel, <coughs> sorry, um, is that I would get like a nice succession for a few videos and then it would go down. Maybe because I would touch upon a different topic. Um, so what I decided to do, and this is remember, this is where we're going to have some magic later on, this arm. <laughs> uh, so what I'm trying to do now is make the content a little more homogenous, I guess. Um, just as an experiment, I do want this channel to be authentic, meaning if I do sketches, I want to do sketches in the channel. If I do... Um, vlogs, I want to do vlogs, I'm not going to uh, compromise on that, but I can make a few experiments just to test out and see what works and in what way. So what I want to do now is just experiment and see um, if it does lead to a, a s s faster growth. Uh, so I'm focusing on watercolor really for the last few uh, weeks and trying to and because there's a demand for it and I have tons of ideas in that sense so so I really feel okay with doing it that way uh, and let's see we'll, we'll test it out. Um, I thought about another idea uh, that a lot of people um, that know YouTube uh, pretty well and and teach how to succeed on YouTube, uh, they do, they, they say that if you have a variety of content and like different audiences inside your audience, for example, some of you love sketching more, some of you prefer the, the product reviews, some of you prefer the painting processes. So there's like different facets, different, different mini audiences inside them, the main audience. So for channels like this, make a schedule like, uh, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, meaning Sunday is going to be devoted to watercolor and Tuesday is going to be devoted to water uh, to sketches and so on. And that way the audience knows what to expect. By the way, you notice the magic already started happening. Notice how there's a variety of edges There's a, on the left side. I really love the way this turned out and I think it will be even better uh, in the next uh, wash that I'll add of the darkest darks. So pay attention to that area on the left. I don't know, it's just, I loved it. Um, so in any case, they recommend making a schedule or making it a little more organized. And the problem I have with that is that uh, I do so many things around YouTube that, that like regardless of YouTube, that um, 
this will be way too limiting for myself. I don't want to limit myself this much and say, okay, on Sundays I do this or because what if I have a really good video I want to share on Sunday and Sunday is sketch day. I don't, I don't want to have that limitation placed upon me. So for now, I'm just trying to play around with different types of content, seeing what, what you react to the most and what you enjoy the most. I also noticed the outdoors adventures kind of vids are also getting uh, uh, a nice level of popularity. So I will uh, try and do more of these. Uh, and basically just trying to grow this channel as much as possible. I had a crazy number in my mind for this year. And it's funny to say I didn't reach it. I mean, the year is not over yet, but it's highly unlikely I will reach that. Um, but I did get quite a nice growth this year. I think it's crazy. And so for the next year, for 2018, uh, I hope to uh, get uh, maybe to that number I set out for myself uh, for this year. So it could be interesting. Um, now back to the painting for a while. So what I'm doing is now that the wash is a bit more divided, I don't have to worry about this entire huge attire he's wearing. Um, I have more time to get <clears throat> some of the variation in color a little more well-defined, some of the wet and wet action a little more well-defined. Now the wash is a little drier than earlier, so I can afford that. And so you see me doing just that, trying to make the most of the wash while it's wet, um, while being aware of the edges and not letting them dry. Because right now the, you see I left the, a very harsh line on the arm, so I know I'll have to continue it in just a moment. And you will see that I did get some blossoms in this area. Uh, you will see where the, where the paint dries right now. Uh, there will be some blossoms, but it's going to be really um, insignificant in the total in the grand scheme of things you won't notice it as much so it's gonna be okay um, sometimes it's hard to avoid that I'm trying to alleviate it by adding some darker paint right now and I will add so I, I will have a third wash I now just now remember yeah so it's just like any other paint, <laughs> painting but I think with this one I got uh, the, the third wash is much smaller it's much less significant than other than my other work, I guess. Uh, but in any case, <clears throat> now it's it's sometimes really hard to avoid uh, breaking the wash, especially if you do try and get a lot of wet and wet details and stuff like that. It's just a trade-off. You you either have to work really fast and be an excel at doing these kinds of thing really things really fast, or you're gonna get a, a wash that's like. 80% good and then fragmented in one place, it's not a big deal. Um, worrying about it is a big deal because if, you were, if you're worried about it and you waste too much time thinking about it, then you're wasting time that you could use to bring the painting together. So, and I think this is where confidence gets into play. And I feel like if there's one thing that I did build is confidence. Uh, in my painting. So I am using confident brush strokes much, much more than I used to in the past. If you uh, look back at my older videos, quite embarrassing actually, uh, you will see there's a huge difference in my level of confidence and this just comes with experience. Um, and it's like I'm, I feel like I'm so far away from where I want to be, but I have to acknowledge the, the way that I made um, because I did uh, come a long way, I think, for about two years into watercolor. It's it's pretty pretty big big. And if if I um, extrapolate it, I think that's the right word. Over the next I don't know like decade, <laughs> then I'm sure I'll be in a very good place. Um, so I'm not worried too much about that. You know, I worry about the micro, not about the macro. So I worry about making sure I practice every day and I'm trying to be fast in that way and, and everything. But on the macro, I know things will sort themselves out. Uh, so now I'm using some, f making some final uses of the wet and wet. While this is wet, I'm trying to get in some more details in. Now, <coughs> one thing that's obvious right now, I think, the, the whole belly area is very flat. Don't worry about that. I will uh, add some paint to this area as well and you'll see me um, blending it in and giving this area some depth as well. Uh, so you see I'm just using a, a weaker wash here. And what I like to do is sometimes just put paint in all of the areas that I think should be darker. So I'm just putting the paint there, 
not being too worried about how I put it. I just use the brush, put it in there, and then later on come back and blend. So you will see me doing this right now. I'm just looking at the reference, trying to figure out where the darker areas are. And now I dry the brush a bit and I'm blending. Um, and, and, and I'm just going, moving on in that direction of adding a bit more uh, paint, clearing, cleaning the brush, going back to the paint, adding some more paint. Uh, now it's nice because I'm zoomed out a bit so I can tell you exactly what I'm doing. I'm um, grabbing some darker paint here, some blue, just to add a bit more interest and not the, this muted green that I had earlier. There's some shadow there, cleaning the brush in the water, drying most of it, coming back to the paper and blending in. And this is constantly what I'll do. Uh, sometimes I do it with two separate brushes just to save some time. I don't need to clear the brush with the paint I'm still using. Sometimes I won't. The reason I don't do it here is because I want to blend with a brush that's still large, so I can't use my size 8, I still need the size 12, and my other size 12 is a Raphael, and it's um, it's good for blending, but I feel like it would be too wild for this size, because it's it, it's a mop, it's not really, a, it doesn't really have a sharp edge, um, so anyway, yeah, and now just again blending in uh, with a damp brush, and now we created some kind of a... Um, uh, some kind of volume to that area as well um, and you can play around with it you can put in in more paint in there while it's still wet just like I'm doing right now you have a lot of freedom while it's still wet um, I think it's like when I used to see people doing this I was like how but how do you manage all of that together and so I'm just trying to get into the head of someone watching this and is a newbie to watercolor and my answer is you manage that and large washes and control over everything just by really mastering the basics. I think this is the one thing that, that the only thing probably that can help with that. Just working on the basics, constantly going back to the basics, working on the blending skills. And you can see I created some uh, blossoms down there in the belly area and that's fine. You'll see how when I add some more of the darkest darks, it will uh, it will make it much, much uh, better and much smoother. So now I felt like I want to cover some of the nose's highlight. Um, so I used very weak yellow, the new gamboge, and, and now I'm trying to lift some of that and just make it... Uh, I think I wanted to pull some more attention to the eye and uh, the cheek. And yeah, and blending in that pants area. Notice how I changed the color in the pants as well, made it a little greener just to create a separation. So now I'm going back and this is the final wash. Um, so now that I think about it, some of my other paintings have more than three. So I guess it is maybe a bit different in that sense. Uh, but anyway, now it's for the darkest darks. And because I did a good job so far, I think um, I'll have less work now. So it's just really putting in some of the... Um, final touches and the moment I felt like this is done I don't need to that I don't need to add more to it I forced myself to stop I didn't want to get it to look overworked as, as sometimes happens um, I think for example Tio's portrait um, was just a slightly bit too like a bit overworked just a little bit um, and the way I knew it is because I saw a lot of harsh transitions in the paint and also because a lot of the areas that I originally planned on keeping pure in color got blended and grayed. So this is how I consider it that it became overworked. And sometimes it's hard to avoid that, sometimes it's inevitable. But if you look at my portrait of D-Rock, uh, this one I think was really not overworked and it was really, it had this spontaneous feel to it. Uh, so sometimes it's just a matter of luck. Uh, also, Roland's portrait was really not overworked. I really just got it in there. Um, I got it a bit lucky in these ones. By the way, sorry, there's like an ambulance noise from the outside. I hope it doesn't come through too much. I'm still learning this mic. I'm still not sure what comes through, what doesn't. So, so maybe you didn't even hear it. Maybe it was terrible. Apologies if it was. Um, so now adding the darkest darks to the... Uh, again, the, the beard and the mustache, and this will really bring the give the face a good shape. Now, I don't remember if I add to the double chin as well, but I think I should. So hopefully I will um, add some stronger shadow because now, now it looks very... Yeah, okay, I do it. It just looks very too light 
for my taste. It's like, bam, it jumps at you. And I think it needs to be pushed back a bit. So the way I do it is I put this mix uh, of, I guess, quinacridone rose and some phthalo blue and blend it, uh, trying to lift some of it up so that it's not such a harsh, uh, harsh shadow. And we're really close to finishing. We have about eight more minutes. So I'm putting in some darks in the, in the, under the, you know, the cheek and then in the ear. Um, the face is almost done. This is the point where I don't want to mess it up. I could have probably darkened some of the hair uh, and I didn't. And now I remember that. So that's one thing I kind of missed maybe. But in terms of the, the face, generally speaking, it's pretty much uh, done. Just getting some more shadows there on the on the edge. Um, the one thing I think needs some work. Yeah, I'm just bringing in that that side of the eyebrow that got a little lost in some of the eye. Um, and as soon as I finish with that, um, I can go back to the to the clothes and just get a few um, darker. Uh, like darkest darks there to balance things out a little to make sure it's not flat now there was a shadow under the eye on the left so i'm trying to get that in uh, and hopefully i did a good job with that i think i did uh, it was necessary if you look at the reference it's really darker that on that other left side uh, i think the other eye could have the entire area could have been a little darker but um, I didn't want to overwork it once again and it's already so uh, abundant with different colors and they're all pure so you get the pure blue you get the pure orange or, or red and then you get the pure yellow of course in your face so I tried to avoid overworking that um, by the way I got a new phone I was out when I was sick I didn't also didn't have a phone so that was a bit annoying um, I had an iPhone 5s and now I got a 7 uh, which is so much better uh, but really the thing is I'm, I'm really a simple guy I wouldn't have gotten the 7 I would have probably just fixed the 5s the thing is I'm using it extensively for work and I must have it like working properly so it's not even uh, it's not even for fun, basically. Uh, I would probably get a much simpler phone for fun. I think I would get like an Android if I was just doing it for fun, maybe. Um, I don't like to spend a lot of money, generally speaking. I'm not a. I'm not the kind of person that spends a lot of money. I guess uh, it's it's in my in my DNA. I don't know. My parents aren't that big on wasting money as well. Uh, but but this is like an investment for me. Like I really needed a good phone. So I decided to get the 7 and it's really good. So I'm really enjoying it. The, 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 the camera is much better as well. So you may notice that my Instagram posts have improved a bit. This one turned out, I think, fantastic. Um, so yeah, it, w it was annoying to be without a phone and I didn't get to update for a few days. So uh, now I'm happy to be back uh, in business. And now you can see how when I put these darks in there and I'm going to blend some of those, I think, on the left, especially. Uh, I can kind of anticipate what I'm going to do because I know myself and I just imagine what I would do. And now you can really f get a good sense of light and shadow there. I really love the way this turned out. Notice how there are uh, harsh edges in the top, but then there's also the more gradual changes. There's a feeling of just the good qualities of watercolor, I think. Um, some of the classic properties of watercolor that you want to make use of uh, in your work. So I'm really pleased with that. Uh, so now I'm using some of the Thalo, uh, Thalo Blue with just a touch of the red um, to put some more details on the, on the uh, jacket and things like this. Uh, you'll also notice, I didn't talk about it, but I added a shadow under the uh, left side of the jacket as well, just to have the change... Uh, just to feel like it's wrapping the body and it's not just, you know, placed in there. And hopefully I'll change the angle soon. Um, I don't mind using a bit of a drier brush here um, because it's just for the small details and I think it looks good. Uh, I added a bit of yellow, so now we have a bit of a green tint to the shadows. Um, adding some shadows here. I was really close to overworking this area in terms of the shadows. You'll notice how with these kinds of folds and creases you get really sharp shadows. Uh, all you have to do is really observe the reference to see this. Uh, you saw it on the other hand as well. And the reason why is that the, the light comes at an angle and the, the folds and clothes in the fabric are elongated. So you get this sort of a sharp uh, long 
shadow, shadowy shape, I guess. Um, so it's one thing that just by observing, and I'm a big proponent of observing. Before everything, before you learn techniques and stuff like that, before you... Even when it comes to drawing people in general, uh, and in my course that I'm that's going to be out really soon on sketching people, uh, and in the book that I plan on publishing on this topic, I'm a big believer in observe first. Don't worry about anatomy. Don't worry about memorizing muscle areas and and you know bone structure. I don't care about any of that. I think the first thing you need to work on is your observational skills. Um, later on, if you want to like become a, a, a master, a true master of anatomy and draw things out of your own brain, then you can definitely dive deeper and there's a lot of merit to that and really um, research the, the anatomy and what's under the, the muscles and the tendons and everything and get it to look perfect. But for starters, most people lack in just basic drawing skills. And I think this is the most important thing, like observe what you're drawing draw it as it is which is a big thing i just start to realize now it's like we see the world in this is actually a topic i want to talk about in the podcast i will edit now i'll write a note um icons and symbols and abstraction i saw a a fascinating video by Jordan Peterson that I plan on making a portrait of and he talked about this concept of how we abstract everything if you ask a child to draw a hand he will draw a hand but more of a symbolic hand so not icon I meant to say symbol uh, like symbols Uh, then he'll draw a symbolic hand and one of the major challenges is detaching yourself from this symbolic viewing view of things and draw them as they are and when you draw them as they are they are quite weird looking because you're not used to seeing the world in that way uh, unless you're an artist and you really trained your visual perception Um, so anyway this is the one thing I think the one kind of uh, um house and hand example i just i'm just writing myself a note um so this is one of the hurdles that you need to go through when you're just getting started so now i'm putting in the the creases and and folds on the kind of sweatpants i don't know what you'll call these um and we're almost done like in 10 seconds i think um so anyway these abstraction things i also mess up sometimes so i'm still learning this stuff as well Uh, but i think it's really one of the most important things so anyway this is done and i want to give you a look of the final result in just a moment um i'll sign this one later on so here's the final result i hope you enjoyed it and let's wrap up this video So friends, I hope you enjoyed this uh, long process. Uh, This is done, I believe. Uh, I don't want to touch it anymore. I think it's good. I don't want to get it to a a level where it's overworked. Um, Let me zoom in a bit so you can just see uh, some of the details here. Okay, so I'm starting at the top. And um, what I really enjoyed here is uh, playing around with some of the... Uh, warm and cool colors. So I decided uh, with the hat, I initially wanted to do it gray. But then I was afraid that I'll uh, set the premise for the painting <laughs> in gray. And I find it to be um, uh, maybe a weakness of mine that I accidentally gray out everything. So I overmix and then I just use too much gray, too fewer um, um, pure colors. And so I decided uh, to be very careful here. And because it's at the top and uh, it's usually the place where a lot of light hits, I decided to go with kind of yellow, then I darkened it with a bit of the um, the red. Uh, I just used the three colors. And then for the hair, it was obviously uh, darker and I decided to, to have a stark contrast with the hat itself. Uh, for the face, I tried using the same yellow kind of uh, maybe a bit more dull uh, just for the skin tone I didn't obviously go for realistic uh, realistic colors here uh, and then with the clothes I kind of winged it uh, one of my favorite parts is actually this one where you can see uh, I played around with the edges got them to be um, very sharp and abrupt here but very soft here and then when you go down into the shadowy area it's also very soft so you get a, a good sense of light and shadow but also uh, a good use of watercolor and their their uh, properties and I wasn't able to achieve that exact same effect in other places here you can see it really well um, while here uh, it's not as much Um, I got really close to the point of having this part uh, of the stomach a little too overworked 
uh, but in any case, yeah, this is it. I think the the uh, the pants turned out really nicely, uh, and so overall, really pleased with this one. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let's change the angle and wrap up this video. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed uh, this process. Here's once again the final result. Um, sorry for the light. I'll try to maybe. Uh, also uh, put a good high quality image and you can also see the high quality final result on my uh, Instagram um, and yeah this is it I really hope you enjoyed this video thank you so much for all of your constant support and just following me and my journey uh, don't forget to check out my podcast I will put a link in the description box uh, below it's starting to build up really nicely and I, I'm starting to get some good feedbacks on it and I'm really trying to improve it and learn so your opinion on it really matters to me and so if you let me know uh, what you think I could improve that'll be really really awesome uh, again as I mentioned Instagram and Snapchat for more works in progress daily updates things like this thanks again and I will see you in another video really soon